A few days ago, one of my Patreon patrons kind of did a thought experiment to think about how the batteries in a Tesla bot might be configured. And it's actually really interesting and probably not what you're thinking if you think about it just off the cuff. Let's take a look. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So back in August of 2021, Elon Musk introduced the Tesla bot in, you know, a fairly loose detail at the time and just sort of gave some indications of how it would work and everything. If you look at the uh, graphic that they put up at the same time, you can see a bunch of information about it. But what it's really, really lacking is where the batteries are gonna go. And so that's what I wanna talk about today. First of all, I wanna be super clear, this is absolutely speculation. The odds that this are at, this is absolutely correct is like super, super small. And second of all, I just want to point out and give credit where credit is due. This is one of my Patreon patrons who came up with the original idea and sort of worked out the basic math and everything. So anyway, this is back of the envelope calculations. This is a bunch of different things that are going on here. A lot of speculation. Do not expect this to be exactly like what will end up in the actual Tesla bot prototype or of course the mass produced one. But I think it is worth thinking about this because the batteries are an interesting situation and where to place them in the robot is not a trivial situation. All right, so let's start with the graphic from the Tesla AI Day presentation. You can see we've got five feet, eight inches or 173 centimeters in real units and 125 pounds. I think that's somewhere around 50, 55 kilos, something like that. Anyway, so it's got a screen for a face. You can see that there's some sort of hardware three block of stuff that it's going to use as its main computer drivers, everything, right? Then it says lightweight materials, a bunch of actuators, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, force feedback sensing and a bunch of other things like that. The big thing that's not really apparent, maybe it's this back plate back here behind the Tesla bot, but it's not really clear where the batteries would go. And obviously for a robot, even though it's much, much lighter weight than a car and doesn't require as many batteries, it still is going to require, you know, the more power that you have, the more energy that you have to feed this thing, the longer it's going to be able to operate on a single charge. So that's all to the good. So let's think about how we might be able to put these batteries in. The first thing we should think about is the fact that Tesla is now a master of structural battery packs. They are now producing the Tesla Model Y with 4680 battery cells out of Texas that have a structural battery pack, which means the batteries are directly part of the structure of the vehicle. So they have that capability. In terms of this, they've also said that part of the structural battery pack is a sort of foam or something like that that they're using between the battery cells because they're still cylinders, right? They're still jelly roll cylinders. But in between them, they're putting a structural foam, which also has thermal capacity features too. So it helps to wick away heat at the same time that it's acting as a structurally rigid material. The next thing that's worth noting is that there have been leaks on Twitter and a couple of other places that there may be an extra large like 4610 as opposed to a 4680 battery cell. People have been speculating that might be really useful for something like the Cybertruck, which would have a, a, a higher bed. So you could have 11 centimeters as opposed to eight centimeters for where the batteries would go. Could be super, super useful for the Tesla Semi, but also it could be useful for the Tesla bot. That could be a really good form factor for that as well. So again, as opposed to eight centimeters tall, it's actually 11 centimeters tall. At a guess, of course, this just pictures that have leaked and people are kind of looking at it and saying like, it's about a third bigger-ish. And of course, a 4680 battery cell is 4.6 centimeters wide or 46 millimeters wide. So then some super rough calculations for a five foot eight or 173 centimeter tall robot. The upper and the lower arms would probably be on the order of about 25 centimeters each. And then the upper leg and lower leg would be on the order of 40 centimeters each. So there's plenty of room for something that's about 11 centimeters tall to fit within something like that. So that takes us to a quick mock-up of how this all works. So what I've got here is 14, if you count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, 14 of these 
these. Each of them has 246 110 cells inside of it. So each of them is kind of like a little pack or something like that. And there's 14 of these packs. The two batteries that are part of each cell run in parallel with each other so that you're increasing the amperage. And then everything else, all 14 of the others are running in series. So you're increasing the voltage. Again, the higher the voltage that you have, the better because you can use thinner wires and a lot of other benefits accrue. You don't want to go super high voltage with a, with a household robot. On the other hand, though, you don't want to have something running at 100 plus volts of DC because that would be extremely dangerous if there was like a fray and a loose wire or something and somebody could touch that and actually kill themselves. So as opposed to AC current, where you actually need quite a bit of current to be dangerous, my understanding is with DC, that high voltage is anything over about 60 or 70 volts. So anyway, you want to keep it a little bit below that. And you can see that putting all these guys in series, you get approximately 62 amp hours at 52 volts if you put all of these together, assuming that each of these cells is about 6.4 amp hours and they're running at about 4.2 volts, which would be nominal for this type of battery. So these 28 cells in 14 packs would come out to about 3.3 kilowatt hours, which is quite a bit of power. And just for reference, the full self-driving hardware three, the unoptimized hardware that's in the car right now runs at about 100 watts. So you could run the full self-driving three hardware stack just like it is in the car for 12 hours for about 1.2 kilowatt hours, which would then leave you about two kilowatt hours for moving around, moving the actuators, cooling it if it needed to be cooling, et cetera, et cetera. So there would be a reasonable guess that you could go 10 to 12 hours on a robot like this if you had this many batteries in it. And then of course you would need one to two hours to charge it in between. So why would you wanna do this? this way. Well, number one, you'd be spreading out the weight. Batteries are very, very heavy. You don't really want all of the batteries sitting above the legs in a position where there's a huge amount of weight. And if the thing started to topple, it could actually topple over. So kind of spreading the weight out, putting more weight in the legs so that it's got heavier legs, things like that, re lowering the center of mass. You're pushing the weight out so it's not just in the center of the body. So that actually is a big benefit. You also then are using all of the available space. If you don't do this, there could be like hollow areas in the arms and the legs that are basically doing nothing. So why not fill that with batteries as long as you can get away with doing that properly? And again, Tesla has structural battery pack technology that they're really, really good at. So why couldn't they use that for a situation like this? And then lastly, you can get a lot more power doing it this way. If you try to stuff it in all into the torso, you might end up with only something like one kilowatt hour of energy. Whereas if you spread it out like this, you can get triple that amount spread out throughout the entire body. And it leaves more room for the hardware that's going to be internal to the Tesla bot. And of course, I expect this thing to be running on hardware four, not hardware three, and probably an optimized version just for Optimus. So more than likely, we'd be looking at 50, 60, 70 watts of power rather than 100 watts of power. So it would be using less and there would be more for the actuators. But I'm just saying if we just took the bog standard hardware three right out of the car and used it, it runs at about 100 watts for the board. So there's plenty of power to have this thing have a lot of extra power using this sort of battery configuration. That's a huge benefit. One other really cool thing with this is that you probably wouldn't need to have a 240 volt dedicated outlet to charge this at three kilowatts hours or thereabouts, you could almost definitely plug this thing into a 120 volt outlet. Now, you know, again, if it's operating at a factory and you need to recharge it more quickly so it can get back on the floor, then it might be able to operate at the higher voltages and charge more rapidly. But certainly at home, you could run it for 12 hours. And then while you're sleeping, you just plug it in it charges itself back up again, you know, or it can just plug itself in whenever you're not at home or something. So anyway, you know, 120 volt, just regular bog standard outlet that you have at home should be able to charge this thing up in a completely reasonable amount of time. Of course, the thing you're probably thinking about immediately after this is like, wait, what about all the heat? There's got to be a lot of heat that needs to be dissipated. I expect that the torso area, so this particular area here, you know, where it says Tesla in the middle, where it's going to have the full self-driving hardware or the full self-walking hardware or whatever it is. But anyway, that's probably going to need some sort of ventilation system. And these batteries in the center might need some sort of ventilation system. But in general, it's not going to be accelerate. It's not going to run it doesn't have to charge super fast. It doesn't have to discharge super fast, unlike a car. So it doesn't have to have nearly the kind of thermal envelope that a car has to have. So it might be able to get away, especially on these extremities, that it might be able to get away without any kind of extra cooling and just use the foam, the structural foam, to be able to passively cool it. If it does need cooling, you could probably run cooling lines throughout the thing and use whatever you're cooling the hardware for with, because I do expect that 
the main operating computer is going to have to be like thermally managed by some sort of liquid cooling thing and it'll have to have a ventilation system. So you could run that throughout the extremities and actually cool down the batteries that way. Although that adds a lot of complexity because then you're running pipes and things like that throughout the rest of the robot. So ideally, of course, you would not be running a liquid cooling system on the extremities if you did this. Now, even if you might need that, you could get clever with battery management because what you could do is have the central batteries, the ones that are close to the main hardware board, in other words, in the torso of it, those could be liquid cooled and actively cooled, and they could be the battery cells that are doing the most, you know, if it, if it needs a lot of power all of a sudden or it needs to charge quickly, those could charge and discharge more rapidly first and they could be cooled, and then the ones in the extremity can kind of provide more of a consistent power so that they can stay within a thermal thermal envelope either charging or discharging so you know again you can be kind of clever with this whereas you can do some thermal management active thermal management with the ones on the torso you could use a more passive thermal management scheme on the external ones simply by managing the batteries in a certain manner so anyway yeah there you have it that is the idea it's very speculative but the basic idea is to take all of the batteries all of the weight and the inability to cram as much stuff as you want to into the torso of this robot and just spread it out some. As long as there's room with the actuators, and you can see here that the actuators and things don't take up all the room, and I know this is just a schematic, but there is extra room here where you could imagine being able to place some of these batteries into the extremities, in the legs, in the arms, and potentially quite a few in the torso as well. So at least in theory and with back of the envelope math, it seems like this would be a really nice way to increase increase the power and also increase the stability of the robot because again you're moving some of the weight down into the legs you're lowering the center of gravity you're making it easier for this thing to walk it would take more energy of course to move the legs around but then again you're also still having to move the torso and everything so i think that the trade off is pretty good it seems like tesla would at least explore this as an option. Maybe they won't end up picking it for some reason that we haven't thought of yet, but it certainly seems like something where they could at least explore it as an option. All right, so that's my thoughts and some of my Patreon patrons' thoughts. I would be super interested to know what you all think about this. Is this just a completely crazy idea or is there something even more clever that we've forgotten and there's an even better power management system that we hadn't even considered yet? So anyway, definitely let me know in the comments. In the meantime, if you do enjoy this video, please do like it so other people can find it because that's how you YouTube's AI algorithm works. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, and in particular today, a huge thank you to my Patreon patrons. This really is your video. <laughs> you guys came up with this. I kind of did some graphics and thought about it myself, but this was, this was pretty much generated by you guys. So thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you want to join the team, check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.